Okay, so now that we have our net, we want to fill it with fish and we're going to use mash for that. Um, mash because it's easy to swap objects in and out to make a whole crowd of objects and um, to even use dynamics on them if we want them to sort of settle inside the net in a convincing way. Although that introduces some issues uh, that we'll get to. So we're going to start doing this not with actually fish models, but maybe just spheres for now to demonstrate some of the ideas. So to do this, we need the original model for the net. So I'm just going to reveal that. I'm just going to hide the curve collector for now. So we just have the original mesh that we had here, and we're using this to populate the, the fish. So for the fish, we'll just create a sphere. Okay. And we'll call this fish ball. Now you want to leave it in the middle of the world here. If I turn on the grid, it's right in the middle of the world. It's always safest just to do that with mash. Otherwise things get a little confusing and I'll just delete its history and freeze its transformations. So to go to mash, we have to be in the FX menu, go to mash, create mash network. And you could do an instancer or a mesh. I'm going to leave it on mesh for now. I could switch it to instancer later. Uh, mesh is heavier, but it opens up some different options. Not that we actually need any of those. So, but we'll just leave it like this for now. And I'll, I'll just leave it on the default linear. So what mesh does is it makes duplicates of an object. So it's a way to um, interact with single objects and make crowds of them in an interesting way. So under mesh distribute here, the distribution type from the beginning was linear. What we want to do instead is distribute them inside a mesh. So input mesh here, it says it's not connected. So we have to tell it to use this mesh. So with this still selected, just middle mouse drag that mesh over to this field. And now it will put our mesh, our mesh objects on the surface. So the distribution type is mesh. The method is scatter. So if we, to increase the number it's scattering them over the surface we don't want to use scatter instead we want to use voxel so this is looking at a 3d space defined by this mesh and putting these into sort of 3d cubes that kind of approximate that shape so if we go to the voxel settings here and if we reduce the voxel size you can see we can fit more in and it's more closely approximating the shape like calculus. And if we reduce that to say 0.5, then it can approximate the shape even more closely because the voxels are close together. So a voxel is a 3D pixel if you've ever played Minecraft. Um, and the problem now is that the voxel mode is set to shell only. We want to set it to fill only. So now it's filling our object. And we'll keep reducing our voxels. And as we make them smaller, it can fit more of these in here. So you can see that um, it's sort of perfectly shaped in this kind of grid pattern. We'll try and break that up. A couple of things we want to do is make this a little more random um, in their distribution and maybe randomize their size and maybe offset the scale so they don't pierce through the surface so much. So how do we do that? We can go back to the mash one node and add add a random node so by default the random node will offset the position by one in all three directions and if we turn it to zero we go back to the beginning so we can just offset it a tiny bit in each one Okay, so we've randomized the position a little bit. So they are overlapping and there's no way to avoid that unless you use dynamics. And we will try that um, in a few minutes, but we'll, we'll see how well it works. I think if we turn the mesh back on, you can see that a lot of them are piercing through, which should be, might be okay. So what we're gonna also add to this mesh network is an offset node. 
So the offset node just allows you to change the values on all of these things. We don't want to offset position or rotation, so we'll turn those off. We just want to offset the scale. And the mode is offset, so it's offsetting means you're adding to the value you have now. So we can say overwrite instead. Turn this on, and we'll set them all to this lower value. So another way you can do this so you can experiment, you can set this to a very low value, so 0 0.1. 0.1, 0 0.1. And so it's overwriting the existing values and giving them all a scale of 0.1 in X, Y, and Z. So obviously that's too small. But down here we have a strength slider. So we can just dial the strength down. And so it's just, this allows you to kind of go somewhere between the low bound that you set of 0.1 in their original size. So you can get something like this. Or you can turn that up and you can instead use random strength. And let's just reveal our net again. Now let's say we want to restrict the fish or whatever is in this net to only, you know, up to this point here. And so we can use a mash visibility node for that. It's the easiest way to cull these things is using the visibility node. So just add visibility node here. Nothing happens. Um, because we either have to, so we can use random strength, so it randomly gets rid of some. We can use step strength, so it's just counting them off in order. So in this case, it's going in this direction, which doesn't really help us. Strength map, you can project something, but the easiest way to do it is to use a fall off object. So just click on here, right click, and say create. And it just creates this big sphere. And if we move this around, we can reveal or hide more of our mesh objects. And if we double click on the fall off object, you can see the shape is a sphere by default, but it could be a cube if this works better. And you can see that there's kind of a fall off here. It's just an easy way to essentially delete these things. They're still there though. So if you wanted to reveal more, just unhide this. And that works pretty well. Save my scene because we're going to try some dynamics in a second. And that's very crashy. Um, but if we just go and render. All right, so we have a bag full of these little balls. Now, one of the good things about MASH is you can swap out objects. So um, I think I have a fish model that I downloaded from the internet. Okay, so there it is. I just downloaded this from TurboSquid. It was one of their free models. Um, so I'll just center the pivot. I'm going to make it smaller. And even that's maybe too big, 0.1. And I'm going to put it in the middle of the world by going to absolute transform zero, zero, zero. And I'll delete its history and freeze its transformations. And I could straighten it out if I wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. It's even a little big. So let's make it a little bit smaller. freeze the transformations and delete the history. So if we go to our mash node here, what we want to find is the mash one repro mesh. So since we made this mash as a mesh rather than instances, we have a repro mesh. If you made it as an instance, you would have a mash instancer and both work in the same way. So I'm just going to copy this tab so I can have it so I can deselect this and still have it up in front of us. And I'll select the fish. And I'll just right click in here. So the objects in the mash repro, right click, add selected objects. And just put fish, whatever new model you want, just put it at the top of the list. And you can see that it's replaced it with all those fish. So obviously they're all pointing in the same direction right now, which I guess is what a school of fish might do. If we go to the mash node, go back to our random node, and we can add some randomization to 
X, Y, and Z in rotation. Right, so now we've got a whole bunch of fish that are caught in our net. So now if you wanted to, you could use dynamics to make these all fall to the bottom. It's not going to work very well with these fish because they're so thin that they will make a very small pile. This actually, to me, I would stop here. This looks good. Um, but if you want to, just for the sake of demonstration, and we go to our mash node one more time, we can add dynamics. I'm going to go to mash. I can feel it's slowing down already. Open up our mash editor just so you can see what's going on here. So we have the mash distribute, the mash random, the mash offset, the mash visibility, then the mash dynamics. Just so you know, these are executed from the bottom up. So mash dynamics is happening last. So yeah, so some of these fish are kind of poking up, but that would happen. This net is obviously not made for these fish. I can see now that maybe my fish need to be a little bit bigger. So let's just say we did want to make our fish bigger. Okay. So let's go to our mesh offset where we reduced the size of them earlier. So we can reduce the strength of that to make them bigger. Okay, so they're bigger now. Okay, so now we've got bigger fish in here. It's a little more obvious when they're <laughs> going through each other. So we could go back to the original distribute node now and increase our voxel size. So 0 0.3, for example. So now there are fewer fish and that maybe makes more sense for this size of fish. And we can go back to 0 0.4, right? So if we want to do something like this, there are fewer, bigger fish being caught. So this is one of the real benefits of MASH. You know, we could swap this new model in. We could go back to our original settings and it all plays out through the whole thing. So MASH Dynamics is turned on. Now, when you work in MASH Dynamics, it's not end dynamics like you have with end cloth and things like that. This is what's called the uh, rigid body solver. It's called the bullet solver in Maya. So there are settings you have to change in the Maya Dynamics node but also this one called MASH1 Bullet Solver. So in the Bullet Solver, the only thing we're really going to change is adding a collider object. So that's where we want to add our, our mesh, sorry, our, our bag. So not the curves, but the original bag. It's hidden right now. Um, and then if we go into the Dynamics node, the collision shape and this is in MASH, MASH Dynamics. The collision shape is set to automatic. I'm just going to change it to capsule. You won't see it, but it just makes a capsule shape around each of our objects so it will solve a little faster. Let's play the animation and see what happens. So that went better than I thought it would. So the good thing about doing something like this is that they look well, more dead now. They're kind of equally spaced, but they shouldn't be colliding with each other. Okay, so let's undo that. If we go to, let's say, mesh, then it treats the collision shape as the actual mesh. So you should see that it's much slower to calculate. That's actually not too bad, but I reduced the number of them considerably from before. Now you can see one thing that's happening is that a lot of them are making it out of the bag here. You can see it's really slowing down now, but because they're so thin, they're kind of collapsing onto each other. So you can do this if you want. But if you find if you want to do something like this, I'm just going to hit stop. Escape, escape. Okay, there we go. Um, this will be really slow, but let's say we just go back to even convex hull might work. So go back and play the animation. Yeah, that's much faster. 
Okay, convex hull is pretty good. It sort of respects the shape, um, but it calculates much faster. You can also re um, duplicate this repro mesh. So the repro mesh is like the output of all of this mesh stuff. And if you want to freeze it in this position, you can just uh, shift D or control D. And then you can have a copy of that mesh in that position. Right. And then, cause if I go back to the beginning, the timeline, these things pop up. Now, if I just hide this mesh, it's not going to calculate anymore. And I can just move this duplicate into the space. I'm just going to delete this duplicated repro mesh. Turn on my mesh again and actually turn off the dynamics because I don't want that. I kind of like the way they are like this. They're all caught and they're looking for a way out. And there we go. So we went through all the steps of how to make the net and how to fill it with fish. So in the next video, we'll just take a second and look at making the undersea lighting.